Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at arabicpod101.com. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources and start learning more every day. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. 
With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Marhaban jamian, ana Carol. Hi everybody, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Al Arabiya fi Salasi Dakaik the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned how to use the verb ata. In this lesson, we will jump into our lesson series dedicated to question words in Arabic. Our first word will be the one that is most commonly used to ask a question, and that is the word used to say what. We have seen it in previous lessons, and you'll see that there is more than one way to translate it in Arabic. So imagine you want to ask your friend what he is doing. How will you do it? You will ask, ماذا تفعلو? ماذا تفعلو? So let's break down this question. ماذا is the ready-made formula to say what in Arabic. تفعلو is the second person form of the verb فعل, which we already studied. So altogether it is, ماذا تفعلو? What are you doing? As you can see in Arabic, what is mainly translated as ماذا and when used before a verb, it doesn't change. The answer will be formed by the repetition of the verb, followed by a noun, if necessary. In the case of the verb fa'ala, or to do, the verb you answer with will depend on the action you are doing. So the answer could be, for example, ana adrusu, I'm studying. The rule is simple. Each time you want to ask a question, starting with what, and followed by a verb, you have to use mada in Arabic. On the other hand, when used before a noun, it becomes ma, as in, what is your name? Ma ismuka, for a man, and ma ismuki, for a woman. 
Now it's time for Carol's tips. Another difficulty in Arabic is when you ask a question that uses what in English but doesn't use what in Arabic. For example, in what time is it, instead of using ma, we should use the quantity word kam that we learned in lesson 8. In this lesson, we learned how to translate the word what depending on the grammatical situation. I know it is not always simple, but I'm sure you will remember these short rules. Next lesson, we will talk about the Arabic for the question word where. Do you know it already? I can promise it's easier than what. I'll be waiting for you in the next Al Arabiya fi Thalati Daqaiq lesson. Araakum fi al-Marati al-Mukbila. See you next time. Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ArabicPod101.com. Marhaban jamian, ana Carol. Hi everybody, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Al Arabiya fi Thalati Daqaiq. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned how to ask what questions in Arabic. This time, we are going to ask where questions using a word that you already learned before. Imagine you want to ask where your friend is now. You will ask him, Aina anta? This is the exact translation of where are you in Arabic? Aina anta? So let's break down this question. First, we had Aina, which is the basic translation of where in Arabic. Anta, which is you in the masculine, becomes anti in the feminine. As you notice, the question Aina Anta doesn't need a verb, and the answer is the same. Ana fil madrasa. I am at school. In Arabic, there is no such thing as at, in, or into. It is all translated into fi. So Ana is I am. Fi is at, and al-madrasa is literally the school. So in Arabic, where is mainly translated as Aina. For example, if you want to ask, where do you live? You will say, Aina taskunu. As in English, the question word is placed in the first position, then the verb. Unlike English, the subject is included in the verb. Be careful because several variations of where are possible in Arabic. For example, if you want to ask, where do you come from? You will use min aina instead of just aina. So that question in Arabic is min aina anta. The word aina also changes if you refer to a destination. You would say, for example, ila aina tadhabu, which means where are you going to? This question formula ila aina is often used when asking about your final destination. For example, your final train station or highway exit. The grammatical rule for where to is that it should always be followed by a verb, whereas where and where from can be followed by both a verb or a noun. Aina anta? Aina is followed by a noun. Where are you? Aina tadrusu? Aina is followed by the verb tadrusu in the second person of the present indicative. Where do you study? Min aina anta? Or where are you from? Min aina is followed by a pronoun anta or you. Min aina ta'ti or where do you come from? Here, min aina is followed by the verb ata or come, which we studied before. Now it's time for Carol's tips. Be careful when asking someone's country of origin. The exact translation of where do you come from, min aina ta'ti, can also mean where are you coming from, depending on context. So the person might answer with, I came from work, or I came from the hairdressers. So my advice would be asking, Min aina anta instead. That can be translated as, from where are you native? And there's no chance you will be misunderstood. In this lesson, we learned how to correctly use the Arabic word for where, aina, and also its different variations. In the next lesson, we learn more about asking questions, this time using when in Arabic. I'll be waiting for you in the next Al Arabiya fi Thalati Daqaiq lesson. Araakum fi al Marati al Mukbila. See you next time. Marhaban jamian, ana Carol. Hi everybody, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Al Arabiya fi Thalati Daqaiq. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned how to ask where questions in Arabic. This time, we are going to ask when questions. Let's go, hiya bina. 
Imagine you want to ask when your roommate is coming back home. You will ask him, متى تعود إلى المنزل? متى تعود إلى المنزل? So let's break down this question. First we had متى, which is the basic translation of when in Arabic. تعود is the verb to come back in the second person present indicative. Then إلى, which is to. And finally, المنزل, which is home. So altogether it is متى تعود إلى المنزل? When will you come back home? For a woman, you should say متى تعودين إلى المنزل? So in Arabic, when is generally translated as the word متى. For example, if you want to ask when were you born, it would be متى ولدت. Let's have a look at another example. How can you say when did you arrive? It is really simple since it's exactly the same pattern as When were you born? Mata wasalta. First we have mata, which is when. The second word is wasalta, which is the verb arrive or wasala in the second person past indicative tense. Have you noticed a difference between the sentences mata taudu ila manzil and mata wasalta? The first one is talking about a future action by using the present indicative form. When are you coming back home? Or, when do you come back home? Whereas the second one is referring to the past, when did you arrive? So you can use the word mata to talk about any moment, whether past or present. If you want to ask a question about duration, as in, since when have you been working? Then you will have to say, منذ متى تعملوا? Here too, it's exactly the same as in English, because since is منذ. So, منذ متى? means since when. Let's see how to ask until when in Arabic. It's very easy because you can translate it directly. It becomes إلى متى. So for example, if you want to ask a friend until when will you work, it will be إلى متى ستعملوا. For a woman, you can say إلى متى ستعملين. To answer the previous question, instead of إلى, we can use حتى followed by the time to express a period of time. For example, you could answer, سأعملوا حتى المساء. I will work till the evening. Now it's time for Carol's tips. We learned before that in order to form the future indicative of a verb, it is enough to add سا before the present indicative verb. But sometimes the present and the future can both be expressed using the present indicative, as in, متى تعود إلى المنزل? Or, متى ستعود إلى المنزل؟ They both imply the future, but one means literally when do you come back home and the second means when will you come back home. Okay, so in this lesson we learned how to correctly use the Arabic word for when, متى, and also its different variations. In the next lesson we learn about asking who questions in Arabic. I'll be waiting for you in the next Al Arabiya في ثلاث دقائق lesson. إلى اللقاء قريبا see you soon مرحبا جميعا أنا كارول Hi everybody I'm Carol Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's العربية في ثلاث دقائق The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Arabic In the last lesson we learned how to ask when questions in Arabic This time we are going to ask who questions Imagine you want to ask your friend who the girl just behind him is. Here the question you can ask is من هي هذه الفتاة وراءك؟ من هي هذه الفتاة وراءك؟ So let's break down this question. First we had من which is the basic translation of who in Arabic. هي is not a verb but it literally means is she. هذه الفتاة means this girl. And finally, وَرَاءَكَ, which is behind you if you are talking to a man. وَرَاءَ is behind. You add ka or ki depending on the gender for the pronoun you. Altogether it is, مَنْ هِيَ هَذِهِ الْفَتَاةُ وَرَاءَكَ So in Arabic, who is mainly translated as men. For example, if you want to ask who are these people, you will say, مَنْ هُمْ هَؤُلَاءِ النَّاسِ Again, as in English, the question word, who, is here placed in the first position. It is followed by the word whom, which is not a verb but can be translated as are they. Haula means these and is followed by the noun al-nas 
or people. As a question word, men can also be used to ask who did something. If you are in a museum, for instance, you can ask, Man rasama hadihi lawha? This means, who painted this painting? Another question formula with men that is used a lot is liman. In this case, the meaning is different because it can be translated as whose. So if you want to ask whose pencil is this, you will have to say liman huwa hadha al If we break down this question, it is liman, which is whose, or literally to who, huwa, which is the masculine form of hiya, and the singular of whom, can be translated as is, but is not a verb. Hada is the masculine of hadihi, and the singular of haula, meaning this. And finally, al kalam, which means pencil. In order to say, with whom will you go, it will be ma man satadhabu. Ma is literally with, so in this case, ma man means with whom. In the sentence, with whom are you talking? You can use the same formula by saying man tatakallamu. Now it's time for Carol's tips. If someone that you didn't expect is knocking at your door, the common question you can ask is Man hada before opening the door. This literally means who is this in a really polite way. The very casual way to ask it is man, which is much more informal but can be used, but only if your tone is cheerful, otherwise it will sound a bit rude. Before ending this lesson, let's go back and look at all the ways to translate who in Arabic. Man is the basic who, as in man hiya hadhi al-fatatu, who is this girl? Liman is asking about the ownership. It is the equivalent of whose, as in liman huwa hadha al Whose pencil is this? Ma'aman is with whom, as in ma'aman tatakallamu, or with whom are you talking? In this lesson, we learned how to correctly use the word for who in Arabic and also its variations. The next lesson will be our last of this absolute beginner video series. We will deal with the last but not least common question word, limada. Do you know what it means? I'll be waiting for you with the answer in the next Al Arabiya fi Thalathi Daqaiq lesson. Ila liqa'i qariban. See you soon. Marhaban, Anna Carol. Hi everybody, I'm Carol. Welcome to ArabicPod101.com's Al Arabiya fi Thalathi Daqaiq, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned how to ask who questions in Arabic. This time, we are going to ask why questions. Imagine you and your friend had agreed to eat together, but as soon as you arrive to the cafeteria, you notice he's already eaten. You will certainly ask him, لماذا أكلت وحدك? Why did you eat alone? لماذا أكلت وحدك? So let's break down this question. First we had لماذا, which is the basic translation of why in Arabic. أكلت is the second person of the past form of the verb أكلا or eat. And finally, وحدك, which is alone. Altogether it is لماذا أكلت وحدك? So in Arabic, لماذا is the exact translation of why used to ask the reason for something in a verbal phrase. So for example, if someone is asking you, why did you come here? He will say, لماذا أتيت إلى هنا? Again, لماذا is why in Arabic. أتيت is, did you come? إلى is to, هنا is here. Altogether it is, لماذا أتيت إلى هنا? Another way of saying why in Arabic is by using lima to ask the objective or cause of something. But in this case, it only comes in a sentence with no verb. For example, lima sautuka hazin or why is your voice sad? Now it's time for Carol's tips. A famous expression in Arabic is lima la, which means, like in English, why not? You can use it to accept an idea or suggestion if you aren't really excited about it or if it wasn't planned in advance. For example, if a friend asks you suddenly, do you want to go to the movies tonight? You can answer, Lima la, why not? Before ending this lesson, let's review all the ways to translate why in Arabic. Limada is the basic translation of why used in a sentence with a verb, as in, Limada akalta wahdaka, 
Why did you eat alone? Lima for sentences without a verb, as in Lima sautuka hazin. Why is your voice sad? Finally, Lima la is why not? This lesson is the last of this absolute beginner's video series, but it's hopefully not the last to learn about the Arabic language. To take your language ability to the next level, check out ArabicPod101.com, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Arabic. Arakum kariban. Salam, welcome to Arabic Weekly Words. It's Shayma again. Let's find out this week's topic. Hmm, nice. Giving a compliment. We have one word for that in Arabic. Mujamal. First word is hlu uh, or hluwa for female. Means sweet. A Darija word would be ghzal or ghzala. It's used to describe like person physically or just the, the way they behave or they, just the way they are like that girl is so sweet. It could mean that she's beautiful physically or she's beautiful as a person. Well, depending on the context means different things. Next word, aniq or aniqa. It means elegant and we have the same word in Deja. Her mother is so elegant. I like how she dresses. Next word, latif or latifa. It means nice and in Deja we say dreif or dreifa. I like that teacher so much. She's so nice. Next word. Jamil uh, or Jamila for female. It means beautiful. In Fusha or in Asia we, we use the word Zween or Zwina. And Zwina or Zwina is not only used to describe like people physically, like beautiful. Uh, it's used in so many different ways. That actor is so beautiful. Next word. Dhaki or dhakiya means intelligent. In Darija we say dhki or dhkiya. The difference is the the and the da. Most words that have the in Fusha we just take off the da and say da just because it's easier. So in Fusha instead of dhaki we would say dhki. Ahadik al bint dhkiya bzaf. Ghaikunu inda mustaqbal zween. Uh, that girl is so smart, is so intelligent or so smart. She's she's ha she's gonna have a great future. That was it. Uh, I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Hi everyone. This is Prehan and this is the Egyptian Arabic weekly words. Today's lesson is about the weather. So let's get started. Harara shadida, harigidan, extremely hot. Harara shadida, which means extremely hot, and in the dialect it's. Har giddan, har giddan. So you can say El uh, gawf al Sahara, har giddan. El gawf al Sahara, har giddan. The weather in the desert is extremely hot. Ratab, rutuba, humid. Ratab, humid. And in the dialect Arabic, it's rutuba. For example, you can say Gawu Masr, ma fihush rutuba ktiir. Gawu Masr, ma fihush rutuba ktiir which means uh, the weather in Egypt is not very humid. Riyah, hawa, wind, riyah, wind. Or in the Egyptian dialect, it's hawa, hawa. So you can say, in Naharda, el hawa jdeeb giddan. In Naharda, el hawa jdeeb giddan. Today, the wind is very strong. Sama Sophia, Sama Sophia. Clear sky, Sama Sophia, clear sky, or in the Egyptian dialect, Sama Sophia, Sama Sophia. Uh, for example, you can say, Sama Sophia Zayil Bahar, Sama Sophia Zayil Bahar, which means the sky is as clear as the sea. Ghaim, Maghaim, cloudy, Ghaim, cloudy. And in the dialect Arabic, it's Maghaim. Uh, so, for example, you can say, El gawm ghayim shakla hat matar. El gawm ghayim shakla hat matar. Which means the sky is so cloudy, it seems as if it's going to rain. And that's it for today. Thank you for listening. I hope it was fun. Uh, why don't you comment below about what is the weather like now? And please subscribe and check our websites. Bye bye. Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ArabicPod101.com. Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, 
where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn, one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining. No bad news. But you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much. And this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad, but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement, and it doesn't matter if you do a 10-minute lesson or a 5-minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. 
If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time, bye. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, 
measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So, for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here, though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then, after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles, or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. You'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher, watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. And if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. By telling others about your goal, you feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. 
you may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love, because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.